67 counties, hundreds of cities and towns, all doing their own thing. This is not the, in the best interest of public health, and it leads to way too much confusion. So I urge Governor DeSantis to pay attention to the science here. A county not yet having a confirmed case is no excuse to not have a statewide order. In fact, it is the very reason a statewide order is necessary. The goal should be preventing the virus from infecting the entire state, not waiting until the virus is quickly spreading before responding. In the absence of leadership on creating a statewide policy, I've been working closely with county leaders and others to bring some uniformity to a stay-at-home or safer-at-home order here in Pinellas. Now, the city and the county were basically on the same page heading into today, and I very much supported most of the language in the county's resolution. But I did take issue with this particular paragraph, which is really the focus of the entire resolution. Businesses in Pinellas County are directed to close storefront operations and limit customer foot traffic if they do not provide essential services as outlined in this resolution. And here's the big donut hole. Or, or cannot maintain CDC social distancing guidelines. So that language basically allows everyone to go everywhere. It means that any business can remain open as long as they believe or say that they can maintain social distancing. Now, I do want to say something right now about uh, this partnership with the county uh, and the county's intentions. First off, I can't say thank you enough uh, to the county administrator, Barry Burton, and the entire commission. They care passionately about this, is this issue. They want to do what they think is best for the community and we've had a very good working relationship trying to get this to a landing place that we could all be comfortable with. Uh, unfortunately, where we got to, we weren't all completely comfortable with, as I just mentioned. Maintaining CDC guidelines, in my belief, is simply not strong enough language. Now, I recognize the difficult decision the county commission faced. All of us are making these decisions daily, and they're not decisions we've ever had to make before. However, economies can be rebuilt, people can't. The only way to truly save lives and to flatten the curve is to suffer the short-term pain associated with the shutdown of all non-essential businesses and to stay home. Now you notice what the order is called. It's called safer at home. It's called that for a reason because we are all safer when we are staying at home. It's when we are going out to other businesses, when we are going out, that we pose the most threats and risks to our own health and to the health of the entire community. And so the idea behind a safer at home order that limits to only essential businesses is it limits the amount of times and the opportunity for you to go outside of your home. We want you to stay in your home. That's where you belong. Now, if you've got something essential that you have to take care of, if you've got to go grocery shopping, if you have to pick up food, if you have to go to a doctor or pick up prescriptions, yes, go out and do that. If you want to exercise to stay healthy, yes, but we don't want you going out for other reasons. We don't want you going to a store because, hey, you know, maybe this is a good time to buy a new mattress or get a picture frame. That's not what it's about. And so while I strongly disagree with the approach that was taken this morning, I do believe it would be unwise to add yet another layer of confusion to this. And I also think not having uniformity will simply dilute the effect of a stricter or order here in St. Petersburg. And so, the county's actions will apply to St. Pete, for now. My team and I will be paying close attention to the streets of St. Pete this weekend. We hope to not see crowds. We hope our residents are taking this virus seriously because this virus will kill you. It doesn't discriminate. If you get it, you could die or you can infect someone else and they could die. Now, let me be clear about this too. Our police are not gonna be stopping people in the streets and they're not gonna be pulling cars over and questioning where people are going. 
please stay home. Don't go out unless you have to. Now, earlier I mentioned that we can and we will rebuild our economy, and this is a major focus for us. We've come a long way since the Great Recession, and we intend to get back to great as soon as possible. And that's why we've begun work on a program that will give our small business owners and residents a fighting chance to recover and ultimately to thrive. Our city administrator and deputy mayor has been working on this and working with key members of our team, and she's going to give you an idea of what's to come. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. St. Petersburg is a city of small and independent businesses. They are the lifeblood of our economy, a critical element of our culture and the creators of the special feeling that makes us all love to call this beloved city home. We love local here in St. Pete, and so this time is especially hard. But the city of St. Pete is in the middle of an emergency. Everything about our way of life has changed, suddenly and without regard for the impact it will have short or long term. The mayor and our entire team has been working tirelessly every day to keep our city safe. That is what comes first. But our focus must go beyond the challenge of the day. We must also focus with the resolve that reflects the greatness of our city on our future. We must be focused on our recovery and giving our small business owners who've been so adversely impacted by these necessary public health protocols a fighting chance to survive, to recover, to succeed. We must help the employees that breathe life into these businesses and supply their shine the same chances as much as we can, however we're able. So our goal is to create a fund and distribute resources that target sectors that have been the most adversely impacted by these recent orders. We are working through the specifics, but this fund, the Fighting Chance Fund, will provide locally owned and operated businesses of a certain size and their employees some relief. This will not be a loan, it will be a grant. The mayor and I have spoken with the members of city council and they all support this initiative, understand its importance, and are committed to doing all they can to help with this and all other aspects of our current state of emergency and the recovery that will follow. The Fighting Chance Fund is in its formative stages. We have much work to do to align our available resources with the daunting need. But we are committed to supplementing federal and state resources with local support in a way that will make a difference for so many people in need. This is not easy work. Nothing exactly like this has been done before at the city level, not here in St. Pete. But we've not seen anything this drastic or swift before either. It requires our attention, our commitment, and our innovation. We are prepared to do the necessary work to make it a success. So please look to our various social media channels, our website, the media, and other forms of communication for updates on this program. We are working on it night and day to get it up and running. We plan to finalize it as soon as possible and get it operational applications out the door as quickly as possible. Help is on the way, and we will get through this together. Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. At this point in time, I'll take any of your questions. Yes. Mayor, uh, although you say you're going to follow along with the county's safer at home rule, do you still reserve the authority that you have later on to actually shut down things here in the city, city limits? I do. And, you know, our, our hope is, is that uh, the businesses that uh, are still able to be open, will follow the, the CDC guidelines. Uh, and so we're going to be paying attention to that uh, after the order goes into effect tomorrow uh, over the next several days. And we'll see if, if, if businesses are doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, I, I don't want to be cynical. Uh, it's hard not to be given that we, we've all seen instances where uh, businesses haven't necessarily followed the, the guidelines and the rules. Um, and, and so I, I can't say it strongly enough. Follow the rules, follow the guidelines. If you want to stay open, you got to do it because otherwise we're going to shut you down. Are you going to be monitoring some of these businesses? What will be the tipping point? 
Uh, I don't. I don't know if there's a specific. I can't. A, a tipping point that I'd say. All right, if we hit this number or we see this number of businesses, but we are going to be watching all weekend, all week uh, from from tomorrow forward, uh, and seeing what we're seeing out in the community. Uh, I'm assuming the county is probably going to be doing the same thing because they took a leap of faith in in not going further and 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 taking the amendment that I asked them to take, uh, trusting that the businesses were going to do the right thing. We hope they do. So if you look at, at the, the uh, county's uh, uh, order, it lists uh, pretty specifically uh, uh, all of the businesses that fall under the category of being essential uh, services, essential businesses. So it, it's basically anything that is not under any of those categories. And just as an example, I know when I was uh, giving my comments a few moments ago, and I'm not trying to pick on these particular businesses, but a mattress store, for example, or a frame store, uh, for example, or even a bookstore, you know, all of us can get can get by the next two weeks or 30 days or even 60 days if we had to without getting our picture framed or buying that new book. Uh, we could always order that book online from that particular bookstore. And let's not forget about that. For we have a lot of stores here uh, in St. Petersburg who have an online presence. You can stay home, keep yourself safer at home, and still help that business by going onto their website and purchasing goods from them. And in fact, I'd rather see you do that than go and walk in the store. Mayor, it seems like you, know, you don't think that the county's ordinance really has enough teeth. What are your concerns? And it seems like when you shut one location down, people go to all the other locations. And, you know. So I, I, I think that what, what happened is, is we got distracted by social distancing. Uh, and by that, what I mean is, is that the focus turned on social distancing. And, and not that social distancing isn't important. CDC tells you it's important. But if you really want to make a difference, if you really want to flatten the curve, you're not going to be able to do it just with social distancing. You have to do it by getting people to stay in their homes and only going out, only going out uh, for those essential needs. If, you can, if we can do that, will make a difference. Uh, you know, the sheriff uh, uh, spoke during the, uh, the commission meeting, and one of the things that I thought it was interesting that he talked about was how in all of our jails where there is a complete lockdown, there are no cases. No one has tested positive. Now, I'm not advocating for a complete lockdown. I never have. I'm not saying we need that. This isn't, marsh this isn't about martial law, complete lockdown, curfew. It's not about any of that. But it, what it says to you is that the more you keep people isolated, in this case in their homes, the easier it is to flatten the curve and the better chance we give our medical providers, our hospitals, a chance of staying ahead of this thing instead of falling behind. Personal responsibility? Absolutely personal responsibility. Stay home. You are safer at home. You give yourself less of a chance of getting contaminated, your family less of a chance of getting contaminated, the entire community less of a chance of getting contaminated if you stay at home unless you have to go out for an essential service need. Well, I'm, uh, truthfully, I'm, I'm a, the last thing I've heard, and I have not had direct contact with him. I have spoken with his lieutenant governor. Um, but he does not appear to be moving toward statewide uniformity. And uh, I thought I heard something today, I hope I'm wrong, that he was starting to question whether schools needed to be closed. Um, you know, that's not going to get us where we need to be. It, th this works best, certainly would work best if it was a national policy. We know that's probably not happening. Um, but certainly for the state of Florida, you recognize with the exception of Texas, we're the only other large state in the country that has not in, uh, put in place a stay at home or, or safe at home policy. Because I want to try and work within the, the, the confines of what the county has put forward. 
as far as, you know, I would rather this be a, a countywide approach, a regional approach, if we can be. And so we're going to give it a couple days and see how it works. Uh, but again, as I said very clearly, I've got, I have an order that, that if I need to enter it, we'll enter it. Uh, I hope I don't have to. And the difference would be uh, is non-essential businesses would need to be closed. And that's really the big difference. That's, it's that one sentence that really makes the big difference from my perspective. Yeah, any any time you have, as I said, 67 different counties, cities, municipal uh, towns that are all entering different orders, uh, having different names. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna create confusion. That's why a statewide order makes the most sense because it's uniform and it covers everyone. Now, Pinellas County used safer at home. If if we end up doing something, ours will be a safer at home. I think Hillsborough and and Tampa were safer at home. We are trying to create at least uniformity in our Tampa Bay region uh, so that we have a uniform message, uh, which is really important for the, for the community. I hope people that are watching this are getting that message. You are safer when you are at home. Thank you all so much for covering this today.